Well, thank you for joining for our final of the week of our side by side. Today we're going to think about a little section in Romans 4 and particularly on the phrase who walk in the footsteps of the faith that our father Abraham had before he was circumcised. Paul is trying to argue a case that the Gentiles are entirely in the same spirit as the Apostle Paul because he was justified by his faith before he was circumcised, 430 years before the law was given even. So that he says, yeah, they're entirely in the same in the same area, the same spirit as Abraham, and he is their father also. But I wanted us to think a little bit about this idea of what it means to walk in Abraham's footsteps. I think it means to walk, surely, by faith. That's what Abraham was doing. He was expressing his convictions about God and in God and trusting him. And he moved then. He took steps, footsteps. Sometimes his steps were three steps forward and two steps back, but he was still moving. He had lots of failures. He had lots of mistakes. And that is really reassuring to you and I that his faith, though strong, was not perfect. And often for you and I, our faith can be like that as well. But there are two angles in this, if we could take a moment to think about them today. The first is that Abraham's faith looked upwards, and the second, that his faith looked forwards. When we think about his faith looking upwards, who in whom did Abraham have his faith? It wasn't in the strength of his belief. You know, if I believe strong enough, then you know, it will be okay. You know, the sort of person who says, well, now we're going to pray for a parking space. So let's all pray really hard. So it's the strength of our praying, it's the hard praying that's going to get the space. They drive around and around, and then there is no parking space. And they say, oh, I just didn't have enough faith. No, there's nothing to do with their faith. Faith would not have produced a parking space. It was God who had provided a parking space, and he chose that day not to, for some reason. He maybe wants you to go to another shop, another car park, or maybe he says you don't need the thing at all. So that's not what faith is. But faith is this focus on God in all who he is. It, it says that Abraham glorified God by believing. It's like he, he, he gave glory to God by this. There's something about that I find quite challenging and I turn back to an old book, well, one of the older books I have of Martin Lloyd-Jones on the passages in Romans 3 and 4. And he confirmed, well, he really taught me. I'm learning from him, but, but it was nice to be in agreement. To see the sense that the idea of when we really focus on God, we give glory to God. That which we put our faith in, we elevate, we make much of it. We say, that's the big thing in my life. That's what I'm trusting. And when you think about how much less that Abraham had to go on than you or I, for example, I mean, he didn't have all the scriptures. He didn't have the whole continuation from Genesis forward of the, the people of God, their stories, the kings, the prophets. No, he had none of that. And you think about what Abraham's doing. He's stepping out on the basis of what God has revealed to himself, of himself to him. And God has spoken to him. God has made himself known to him. In what form or fashion, we're not sure. So it wasn't faith in faith. It wasn't if I believe strongly enough. It was faith that was focused on God. It was looking upwards. And, and that is so important. I, I quote you a little quote from Brian Chapel, another person I trust much, he says, I may not understand God's provision. I may not expect it or in this life know enough even to like it, but I trust my God whatever comes. I may not know what will come, but my faith is in my God and what he knows is best, not in what I think is best. And of course, God gave to Abraham promises promises. And, and it was these promises, it was God's word based on God's character that he had the power to make it happen, that he would not let, would not let him die. And he was not a God to, uh, to say one thing and do another thing. He was faithful. And so Abraham was responding to this incredible promise. Well, I'd say it was 
Even more, it was an impossible promise from a human point of view that he would become a father of many nations. As he becomes older and older, the promise seems more impossible to the point where he's saying, well, my wife is beyond the age of childbearing. I'm an old man. This is highly unlikely. This is humanly impossible. But he kept on believing. Not because of what he saw, but, but because of what God said and because of that God was saying it against the character of who he was. And so on the basis of that, his view of God, he says, yes, I will follow that. I will demonstrate my faith by stepping out and I'm going to go for that. I'm with you, God. So his faith is looking upwards. But the second thing about his faith is it's looking forwards. And in order to understand this, we turn to the passage in Genesis 22, where God then tells Abraham to take his son, his only son, Isaac, the promised son, the miracle son, take him up to the mountain Moriah, where he is then saying, and you can offer him on the altar and so forth. Abraham does that. He and Isaac go a little bit further, having left the servant behind at the bottom of the mountain. And then Isaac says, Lord, Father, we have got the wood and we have everything we need, but where is the, where is the sacrifice? And Abraham says, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. Now, this was asking for an even greater impossibility to be overcome. Abraham believing God that the promised child, the only child, the one in whom this great legacy was to happen, through whom would come the Messiah himself. Wow, everything is weighing on this. And when he lays his son on the altar and takes the knife, the Lord calls to him, an angel speaks to him, don't, and turning around he finds there's a ram caught in the thicket. A ram, there is the, the animal that will become the ultimate sacrifice, the Lord Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Now, when you and I think about this, when we come to Christ, we can come with an equal certainty. Why would we be in doubt when we see the love and the mercy in the Lord Jesus Christ as we see him clearly described and lived for us in Scripture? I mean, why would we hesitate in view of his life and death and resurrection and ascension? I mean, what more do we need to assure us? There will not be any other person, no other leader, no other religious figure None ever was like Jesus. So Abraham's faith was looking forward to the fulfilment of God's word as our faith also looks to the fulfilment of God's word. Now, if we want to grow, it must always be and in proportion to our knowledge of God. And it's not surprising that Abraham is called the friend of God. And if you and I can develop our lives to the point where we are developing our closeness to God and in closeness then we grow to know God we understand God then we are going to be able to express our faith so much more naturally and simply and we will have so much greater confidence in in responding to him and acting on faith so let me quote you from Martin Lloyd-Jones now just saying this you cannot have strong faith without holiness and without obedience to God if you're anxious to know how to have a strong faith, here is the method. It means thorough and deep knowledge of the Bible and of God through it, not suddenly taking up an idea and deciding to go in for faith. If you want to have strong faith, read your Bible, go through it from beginning to end, concentrate on the revelation that God has given of himself and his character. Keep your eye especially also on prophecy and then watch his promises being fulfilled. This is the way to develop strong faith. Be grounded in all of this. And then read the historical portions of the Bible and the stories of the great heroes. That's why the author of Hebrews gives us that gallery of portraits. He says, look at these people. What was their secret? It was because they knew God. They gave glory to God and relied on his word. End of quotation. And so as we come to the end of this week where we've gone through maybe some deeper waters and you maybe struggle like I do as I come to the Bible and I really do struggle oftentimes in, in studying. I'm always praying and saying, Lord, please help me. And I, I really testify to the help of God this week 
in enabling me just to put together some few thoughts that I trust will help you and I as we walk, even when the road is uphill, but he will walk with us and he will grace us as we journey together.